the video I put out a few months back titled Monk Being Monitor actually had a slight error in it. Some of you guys pointed it out in the comments section down below. I had a look at it and found that you were right. There were few test cases that were unaccounted for. I'm sorry about that mistake, guys. I don't want to put out wrong content for anyone. And I really want to thank those of you, those astute audience who figured out that there was an error in the code. With that being said, I'm going to delete the previous video. And this is Monk being monitor reshot. Now, the problem is pretty simple. You're given an array of heights, an array of numbers denoting heights. What you have to do is choose two students, H1 and H2, such that H1 is greater than H2 and the difference between their frequencies is the maximum. Finally, if the difference is not greater than zero, we've got to print minus one. This is supposed to be minus one. So have a look at an example. Here we've got three, one, three, two, three, two as our array. The frequency of three is three. The frequency of two is two and the frequency of one is one. In this case, the maximum difference is three minus one, which is two and H one, which is three is greater than H two. That is why our output is two. Now guys, try solving it for yourselves. The mistake I made was that I did not take this condition H one greater than H two into account. But I want you guys to try solving it without any errors. And once you're done, head on back, we'll have a look at the solution. There's one of two approaches we can use to solve the problem. The first is a tad bit faster, but uses more memory. In the first approach, we can store each of these values into a frequency table and compare those values once they are sorted. I'll leave that method to you guys. I'm going to solve it using the latter method. It's actually a bit easier and uses less space. The first thing we're going to do is sort the array. Once we do this, we don't have the additional burden of having to calculate the frequency. That's because like elements are already grouped together. Here we can see the post sorted array is one, one, two, three, four, four, four. The blocks of similar numbers tell us their frequencies. There are two ones, so the frequency of one will be two. There are three fours, so the frequency of four will be three, and so on. What we're going to do is keep a track of three variables and calculate our answer in a single iteration. The three variables are going to be the minimum frequency, the current frequency, and our result. Those are the three variables. Current frequency will be used to calculate the frequency of the current element. In other words, H1. Min will have the minimum possible frequency that's less than the current element. In other words, H2. H2 will always be less than H1 since the array is sorted. And finally, result will be used to constantly calculate the difference between the current element and the minimum frequency. We make sure to store the maximum result inside RES. We start moving from left to right. If an element is equal to its successor, we simply increase the current frequency by one. The moment we encounter a dissimilar element, we're first going to increase the frequency by one. Since our minimum frequency has not been set yet, that value goes into our minimum frequency. We now move on. Two is not equal to three. So its frequency is simply one. Current minus min is one minus two. That's negative one. That's not greater than result. So result remains unchanged. One is however, less than our previous minimum frequency. That is two, which is why min now becomes one. We move on to three. Three's frequency is one. One minus one is zero. Our result remains unchanged and we move on. The next few iterations cause our frequency count to increase. The moment we reach the last four, the frequency will be three. Now our current frequency minus our previous minimum frequency is two. That's why our result gets replaced. Two is greater than the old result value. That's why our result gets replaced. And now that we've reached the end of our array, that will be our final result. The reason this method works is because the minimum frequency trails our pointer. H2 will always be less than H1, 
which is why our second condition gets satisfied automatically. The first thing we do is sort the array. Now remember, this uses tim sort, which has a time of n long n that will also be the time complexity of our entire program. These are our three golden variables, result, min, and current frequency. If ARR of i is equal to ARR of i plus one, we increase our current frequency. Furthermore, i can't be n minus one. That's because we can't compare the last element with its successor. There's nothing else to compare it with. As long as this is not true, we increase the current frequency and we check if minimum is unset. If it is unset, we place current frequency into min. Otherwise, we compare min and current frequency. If current frequency is less than min, current frequency becomes min. As long as that's not true, we update our result. The result is the greatest possible difference between the current frequency and the minimum frequency. We then reset current frequency to zero. Whenever we have two dissimilar elements, it means the next iteration is going to start on a new element. If result is greater than zero, we print result. Otherwise, we print minus one. Once we compile and test, well, it works. Take my word for it. And once we hit submit, we can see our result has been accepted. Now, it had been accepted last time as well, but not all test cases were covered. This time, we'll make sure to be more comprehensive. We'll add a few more test cases. It's been Vivek, guys. Been a blast solving this for you. I'll see you all next time.